What's up everybody, it's Matt, aka The Cut Corners, and we're gonna walk through how to live stream your beats today using OBS and Serato Studio and their new output option. Um, just using the computer, one computer. The only thing I think you'll really want is a secondary display so you can have your Serato Studio on one screen and OBS on the other screen. It'll just give you a bit more real estate to play with. But you know, Twitch, man, it's uh, Twitch, YouTube, all these places are definitely where it's at and it's only gonna become more, more and more of a community there. So I highly recommend getting started on it. It's a great way to connect with your friends, build a community, make some, have some fans, um, and just make content too. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so um, streaming with OBS, we're just gonna use the standard OBS, uh, the free software that you can download. Okay, so if you've downloaded OBS, this is the first thing you're gonna see when you open it up. Uh, this auto configuration wizard is very helpful. I highly recommend it. Just choose the option for optimize for streaming, recording as secondary. And then once you press next, you get the option to choose your base canvas. Um, I highly recommend using 1280 by 720. Unless of course you have a very powerful computer, then you know you could obviously go up. But for like a Mac or just a standard laptop, 720 is probably fine. You have the frames per second, FPS can be 60 or 30. But even still, you could go down to 30 if you needed to for this lower CPU usage. So let's just choose that for now. Once you've done that, you can you can enter your, your stream key for your Twitch service, or if you want to choose another program, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but we don't need to do that right now. We'll get to that a little bit later. So this is the, the, th the main screen. There's um, scenes here, and then there's sources. You can actually move these things around, but just a quick overview is scenes here are the collection of sources, which are different media uh, sources, so whether that's uh, pictures or media or sound, these are the collection of sources here will be in the scenes. So you can see I've got some other ones here that have different things in them, but we're just going to use uh, the demo one, which has nothing in it right now. Let's add our first source. So the first source we probably want to add is a visual. For that, we're going to choose the display capture. Now, if I haven't mentioned this already, I highly recommend getting a secondary display. Uh, it really helps with um, the ability to to have one screen handle the OBS and then the other screen handle the thing that you're, you're trying to capture, which is it. for me right now is Serato Studio. So I'm going to click on adding display capture and I've already got a couple here, but um, I'll just, you know, add an existing display capture. Um, if you haven't got one, just create a new one. And then you'll see here now this is capturing this screen. Um, down here you see the properties, filters, and display. You can actually choose which display you want to choose. So in this case, I'm going to choose uh, one which has Serato Studio, which is just above here. And you can see this is a little bit too big for the canvas. So we can need to resize that. And that's really simply clicking one of the corners and then uh, moving it until it fits into the, into the screen. And there we are. It's in there. Um, so it looks pretty decent. The next thing obviously you want to add is audio. So one of the cool things about Serato Studio is that they have the ability to send audio to a secondary source. So you can see here, uh, this is a kind of relatively new thing. They have this option called make audio available to other applications. If you turn this on and you've downloaded this driver, um, it's called the I show you audio capture. Make sure you've done that if you haven't. If you haven't, just click on this link and it will take you to this screen here um, and it will give you the instructions to install the uh, VAD. If you're on a Mac or Windows computer, you've, you've got uh, some options here. I'm on a Mac, so I'll just click on that and it'll take you to the installer. If you're on Catalina, make sure you go there. Catalina and uh, above have uh, extra security preferences that you need to make sure that you follow. It has a full guide here of what you need to do, all the steps. Um, and the most important part right there is the system extension being blocked where you have to open the security preferences and then allow the software to be installed from the developer. But once that's done and that's installed, you'll see in here you have the option to make audio available to other applications. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It can still allow you to have you know your regular audio output going out to your sound card or your earphones or however you want to route it. But uh, yeah, definitely make sure that you use this option if you if you haven't already. And the, the benefit of this is actually once you install it for Serato Studio, it'll also work for Serato DJ. So if you want to live stream your DJ sets using Serato, Serato DJ, it'll work as well. You just need to make sure that that is on. The reason why I say that is because it actually turns off 
if you quit the software and then open it up again. But once that's in there, um, you go to the sources and you add another source. You're going to add an audio input capture. Now um, we're going to create a new one. We're just going to call this one Serato. Hopefully that'll let me do that. There we go. And from this drop down menu here, we're going to choose the option I show you audio capture. Now that that's selected, when we start making a pattern in here, let's just use a basic pattern. This is probably going to be a bit weird, but let's hear how it goes. You can see the sound is coming through here on this channel, Serato channel. This is the audio mixer. Right now I don't have the mic on, but if I, t if I unmuted that, you'd see that coming in on whatever I had selected for that. I don't have anything selected for that right now. Um, but of course I can get to the properties here just by clicking this little cog and I can choose what I want my mic to be. So it could be my Scarlett or it could be my inbuilt microphone, which is usually what it is by default. So you can see it's there and it's coming in. And that's a good way. If you if you don't have a mic or you don't have an audio interface, you can talk over your your um your productions and it will be separate and you can adjust the level there or mute it if you don't want it. And there you've got your beat separate and your vocal separate, so you can kind of use it as a mixer. The next thing you probably want to do is to spice it up is to add um, an image of some sort uh, or an overlay. I mean, you don't have to. You can just leave it like that, or at least you probably you may want to show your face. So click on the plus to add another source, and you can add um, a video capture device. And the video capture device is, is definitely something that most people have access to. If you have a FaceTime camera, let's just add an existing one. I've got the FaceTime camera for now. So we'll click FaceTime camera and that's me, but I'm really big and I don't really want to be that big. So let's make myself smaller. And then you can kind of move yourself in, in and around wherever you want to be. Um, this isn't necessarily the most flattering picture of me, <laughs> but it'll do for now. And um, yeah, you can move that. Decide where in the on the on the screen is the best place for it. So, I kind of like to have it um, either in this area or down here in the library where it has a bunch of information that I probably don't need people to worry about seeing. And then, yeah, pretty much from that point on, this is definitely where you need to um, add in you know your settings um, if you don't already have your stream key uh, set up, you know for Twitch or whatever. This is where you want to paste your stream key, and once you've done that. Um, you're pretty much good to go streaming live. Maybe to do a quick recording just to make sure everything sounds good. There's no delay or anything like that. Um, and then you'll be you'll be ready to go. The one more thing I'd like to add just since we're here is, yeah, if you want to add like a, an extra layer of, um, I don't know, like an overlay or something or a, vi a visual aesthetic that you might want to work with, um, let me just pull up one that we use for my job a lot. Um, you can start adding... Uh, images. So I'm going to use this image here. Now I've got a bunch of uh, little existing images that I already use, but I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to call it um, Serato TV. And then you can browse your files. I'll just go to my Serato folder. I got some of the free visuals that you can get from serato.com. And I've also got some other ones um, for special things. So one of the ones that we use a lot is the Serato's Kitchen overlay. And this one's kind of ideal because it, um, yeah, it's already kind of preset, but um, I don't want to, I don't want to keep this loaded when I'm not using it. So I'm going to click this option, unload image when not showing. That'll just save some CPU usage. Now you can see here, this uh, Serato TV is, is way too big. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to transform and choose fit to screen. There we go. It's fit, fit it to screen. And that's um, obviously there's some things we need to work out here. So first of all, um, the the GUI or of, of Serato Studio is, is not quite the right size. So we need to resize that to fit. So just make sure we have that there. Make it a little smaller. There we go, we got that. And then you can see I'm kind of like stranded over here. So I'll click on me and I'll drag, oh, gotta be careful about that sometimes. Click on me 
and I'll drag myself up here and there I am in the little microwave and lastly um, if I wanted to add something else here I could as well the most important thing that I want to make sure that everyone understands though is that the way this works is that everything in this and these sources are in sequence so if I move my TV overlay underneath my FaceTime camera I'm gonna be over top of it so I wanna make sure that's at the top of the list and then everything kinda of sits below that it doesn't really matter where the audio is because <clears throat> you're not really looking at that but uh, yeah hopefully that makes sense once you've got everything kind of sitting where you like it and you don't want to kind of mess that up you can click these little locks here and these will lock them in place and that way if you try and click on something and move it around you won't accidentally do that which is really helpful um, because it's very easy to move these things around by accident then lastly in this little fridge here um, you want to you may want to add uh, emotes or the chat box so um, you know this is kind of like another level up if you don't have to do this if you don't want um, maybe you don't even want to use an overlay like this you can kind of get as complicated or as, as limited as you want but if you do you can just click the, another um, plus sign here add another source this is what we call a browser source and we're just going to create a new one we'll call this one chat box now you can see it's just it's nothing but it's got this thing here so we need to actually go to um, we need to go to Streamlabs. So now Streamlabs, they also make their own <clears throat> OBS broadcast software as well. But I'm um, I'm just using their their website, their their kind of moderation and uh, bot features. So when you're logged in here, you can see all the stuff you've got going on. If you go to the All Widgets tab, that's where you're going to find the chat box. Now this chat box will be linked to your Twitch profile, and so once you click on that you'll be able to choose some different uh, kind of presets here but if you just choose the the default you can just click copy here and this is the widget URL and this has all the uh, different sizes here you can make it bigger or smaller and you can choose how long you want it to stick around for if you want it to stick around for ever or always for messages and then you can also in introduce a, a delay if you want but once you've got that all um, all done and you've saved your settings you copy that URL and you just go back to OBS and then you paste it in here. Boom. This is the width and the height and for this I kind of know it's going to be about 300 by 500. Actually I think it's probably going to be like 250 just because I've done it before by 400. Let's see if that works. And that's going to be the size of the, the chat box so click OK. There it is. So it actually needs to be a bit bigger. We can um, we can go get again to the properties here, and we can make it a bit bigger. So if we want to go 300, oops, 300 and 500. See how that looks. There we go. That's a bit better. So that'll now when I go to my Twitch channel, which I'll just do as a demo for you right now, real quick. You can actually see it pop up. Let's move this up here. And we'll go to my chat. There's DJ Airs. We'll just type in some emotes here. And then we press chat. You'll see it pop up here. Now, again, you can see that my name's kind of obscured, so you may need to go back to uh, Streamlabs and just adjust the height and the size of those, um, the font and so forth. But yeah, that's kind of it, really. Um, and then you have basically a, a real nice little stream going on there. You can see your chat as you're streaming and, and things like that. And you can answer people. And yeah, hopefully that's um, helpful for you getting started streaming. I highly recommend getting into streaming for a variety of reasons. But um, it's a good way to kind of like put your music out there, let people know what you can do, uh, interact with your fans or people that also are your friends and like making beats in the community. Um, and yeah, you never know where it can go. It's definitely a hot topic and it's not going anywhere. So even if you don't want to stream, you can just record here and do your recordings and then put them up on YouTube as well. That's actually how I do a lot of my videos. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, please, please uh, come and follow me on twitch.tv slash thecutcorners or just follow me on, on YouTube, subscribe or whatever. Thanks for watching.